Scientists have been keeping a close watch on the Yellowstone supervolcano for years, assuring the public that there isn't any reason to be concerned just yet. Have they, however, disclosed the whole picture? Swelling ground, rising temperatures, newly formed vents, concealed hydrothermal activity, and an increase in seismic unrest are all subtle but important changes that point to a shift occurring beneath the surface. Why hasn't this been extensively publicized if they are indicators of an impending eruption? Is it possible that any potential hazards are being downplayed in order to prevent public alarm? This video looks at the evidence that has been kept secret, the disturbing geological patterns, and the potential implications of these developments for the millions of people who live within the volcano's reach. Join us as we reveal the information they might not want you to know. For decades, Yellowstone National Park has fascinated visitors with its stunning geysers, vivid hot springs, and blazing fumaroles, demonstrating nature's raw force. However, beneath this breathtaking terrain lies a far more fearsome force, a gigantic supervolcano, one of the most powerful on the planet. This massive pool of molten rock, which covers thousands of square miles, has erupted three times in the last 2.1 million years. Each event transformed global temperatures and left scars that continue to define the environment today. Though inactive on the surface, the supervolcano remains restless, with its enormous energy quietly simmering beneath the park's peaceful exterior. There have been recent debates about the timing and presentation of data published by the Yellowstone Volcanic Observatory about two hydrothermal eruptions that had taken place about a year earlier. According to the first reports, a new vent appeared, however, this was not the case. Although Yellowstone National Park's hydrothermal explosions are a well-known geological danger, changing circumstances suggest the potential for novel and unforeseen threats. Many people are speculating about the actual extent of these changes because official communications have only offered a few specifics. These eruptions happen when subterranean water that has been superheated by the park's extensive volcanic system quickly turns into steam. This causes strong explosions that send rock, mud, boiling water, and steam skyward. Although there hasn't been a major volcanic eruption at Yellowstone in over 70,000 years, there have been minor eruptions that are rarely talked about in depth. Hydrothermal explosions, on the other hand, are much more common and pose serious local risks. Larger eruptions can be devastating with some historic explosions, leaving craters more than a mile in diameter although minor occurrences happen nearly every year and are frequently undetectable. One noteworthy incident occurred in the Biscuit Basin region on July 20th, when a hydrothermal explosion sent mud, debris, and boiling water hundreds of feet into the air. Although there were no reported injuries, the eruption shocked people in the area and damaged a boardwalk. But there are still worries about the people who might have been impacted, such as the claims of a woman who was apparently covered in boiling dirt. Although it was not directly witnessed, another hydrothermal eruption took place close to the Norris Geyser Basin at Porcelain Terrace a few months prior on April 15th at 2.56 p.m. Rather, it was captured by infrasound monitoring and seismic activity. A crater that was roughly one to two meters, three to six feet across, was created as a result of the explosion. Since the event was held late in the season, when the park was less crowded, there were no visitors at the time, and the closest boardwalk was roughly 50 meters, 160 feet, away. The event was observed by seismic detectors at the Ragged Hills and the Norris Geyser Basin Museum. A measured delay of 1.3 seconds between the two sites suggests the explosion happened at the speed of sound. There is still a crucial question. Were there any warning signs before the incident? The impacted region is categorized as a blind hydrothermal zone, which means that no outward signs of an eruption like fumaroles or hot springs were present. Rather, the explosion was caused by fluid movement beneath the surface. Active hot springs that fed into the neighboring lake were visible on satellite images taken on April 2nd, but by April 21st, the springs had dried up. This implies that fluid channels have changed underneath, with water moving to a new area where pressure progressively increased until it erupted. The consequences for public safety are still serious 
because of the explosion's close proximity to tourist destinations like boardwalks. When Yellowstone monitoring scientist Michael Poland visited the location a few months later in August, he saw that the area had dried up and was no longer erupting. These recent occurrences, however, emphasize how unstable Yellowstone's hydrothermal system is and emphasize the necessity of ongoing observation and a better comprehension of possible hazards. The hottest spot in Yellowstone National Park is the Porcelain Basin, which is located close to the edge of the Yellowstone Caldera and is a portion of the Norris Geyser Basin. The park's greatest acidity levels are found in these waters, which highlights the intense geothermal activity that occurs beneath the surface. Tracing a direct line from the recent eruption at Porcelain Basin to the eruption of Diamond Pool, which is only around 18 miles away, reveals a remarkable pattern. Sudden and fatal gas emissions have occurred in this area before. Lethal gases can ascend swiftly from the ground, as evidenced by the discovery of five dead bison nearby in 2004. A somber reminder of the unpredictability and danger of Yellowstone's hydrothermal system, the animals fell to the ground where they stood, some of them still upright. After dying from poisonous gases, one of the bison was found on March 11, 2004, lying motionless. The victims included both fully grown adults and calves. The promenade and parking lot at Biscuit Basin's Diamond Pool are still closed about a year after the July 23, 2024 eruption. This prolonged closure implies that geological activity remains unstable, a fact that is not commonly known. Although monitoring is still being done, there is growing fear that current surveillance may not be enough to identify minor but significant changes before fresh eruptions take place. Another level of intricacy is introduced by the hydrothermal systems in Yellowstone's dynamic nature. Frequently, and frequently without obvious notice, these systems switch between active and dormant states. In certain areas, forests have grown during slower times when gas emissions were lower, only to be destroyed when hydrothermal activity resumes. This cycle draws attention to the constantly shifting circumstances that exist beneath the park's surface. Many blind systems, or geothermal characteristics, are invisible from the surface. These buried systems which are frequently only found after intensive research and drilling operations form as hot water moves laterally beneath. Changes in the environment, whether caused by external or natural factors, can have a significant impact on hydrothermal systems. Unexpected eruptions may be caused by changes in subterranean water flow, temperature, and pressure brought on by elements like seismic activity, climatic trends, and even groundwater exploitation. These features dynamic nature necessitates ongoing re-evaluation, especially for field scientists. Every visit should involve a review of safety procedures because once stable locations might suddenly turn dangerous. Other risks come from toxic gases, such as carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and sulfur dioxide. Lethal amounts of these pollutants can appear suddenly. The deaths of bison in 2004 were probably caused by an unexpected sulfur dioxide release which serves as a clear reminder of the dangers even in places that are open to tourists. Serious concerns regarding public safety are raised by the possibility that these gases could emerge in an unpredictable manner, especially along Yellowstone's network of boardwalks, where people might not be aware of the constantly shifting circumstances below. Even though there have been recent claims about new hydrothermal activity the events in issue took place about a year ago. There are concerns regarding the transparency of public safety messaging, given the delayed revelation and the portrayal of these eruptions as recently discovered phenomena. Would everyone be aware of the entire nature of the risk if there were serious threats? The fact that certain areas are still closed indicates that changes are still taking place, which emphasizes the value of close monitoring and an in-depth awareness of Yellowstone's unstable geothermal environment. Similarly, there is growing evidence that the underlying volcanic hot zone might not be as stationary as previously thought. Rather, it seems to be slowly moving northeast, a fact that geologists have just recently come to quietly admit. In regions that were previously thought to have lower risk, this slow migration may have unanticipated effects.
changing geothermal activity, and raising the possibility of future eruptions. An important hint to this continuous change was given by an apparently unnoticeable earthquake that occurred on January 17, 2024, close to the Snake River Plateau in Idaho. The tremor, which had a magnitude of 3.2 and occurred 11.4 miles below the surface, had features that set it apart from typical tectonic activity. Rather, it showed evidence of magma intrusion beneath the crust of the Earth. Low frequency tremors and harmonic signals, which are caused by molten rock pushing through underground fissures, were picked up by seismographs. The theory that Yellowstone's volcanic system is going through a fundamental transition was further supported by spectrogram data that showed bursts of heat, steam, and gas rising from deep below. Monitoring stations throughout the region have taken note of this action. Sensitive detectors have detected small but consistent seismic events at isolated areas such as Moose Creek, Idaho, and in the Norris Geyser Basin, an area known for its intense geothermal features. These movements, which are marked by gradual tremors as opposed to sudden shocks, imply that pressure is increasing as magma looks for new routes and growing volcanic system that is gradually but steadily nearing a critical threshold is indicated by the rising frequency of such events. The Trans-Chalice Fault System, a huge fracture zone extending from Idaho to British Columbia, provides a fuller understanding of this transition. Historically connected to volcanic eruptions, this geological network has recently seen a resurgence in activity. The idea that the Yellowstone hotspot is moving northeast is supported by the fact that many of the most recent seismic events line up with these faults. Massive pressure from the magma's continued movement through the Earth's strata causes fault slippage and changes the terrain in ways that could have long-term effects. This theory is further supported by satellite findings. An unanticipated thermal anomaly was discovered in 2018 using Landsat 8 infrared imagery close to the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome, an area known for its geological instability. This finding identified a 33,300 square meter region with higher temperatures and higher gas emissions. The results indicated that molten rock was moving, moving steadily toward the northeast. Public awareness was still low despite the importance of this data, with government reports downplaying the possible consequences and just sporadic illusions in scientific circles. The area's geological past provides a somber perspective on what might be happening. Evidence of eruptions spanning thousands of years can be found in the Snake River Plateau, a region sculpted by ancient volcanic activity. The 2,000-foot thick layers of basalt and rhyolite found in the Chalice region's lava fields are vestiges of previous apocalypses that provide insight into the possible scope of future calamities. The fact that Yellowstone's volcanic system is far from inactive is demonstrated by these previous eruptions. The potential that Yellowstone's activity could be a component of a much bigger geological cycle gives this topic a wider perspective. Some researchers have suggested a link between the triggering of deep earth mechanisms that propel volcanic activity and previous extinction level events, such the asteroid strike that wiped out the dinosaurs. If this theory is correct, then the current changes beneath Yellowstone might be a part of a recurring pattern that has changed the globe in the past and may do so again. Beyond just being a scientific curiosity, the Yellowstone hotspot's relocation could mark a significant shift in the planet's geological past. When the molten rock keeps moving, it comes across areas with thinner crust that are more likely to fracture. A surface eruption is more likely if magma can penetrate these weak spots. The effects of such an incident would be felt well beyond the local area. Large amounts of ash could be sent into the atmosphere with a significant eruption, interrupting air transport, covering large cities, and changing the climate for years. The question now is not if Yellowstone will erupt again, but when, and if the current data are indicators of an already occurring process. On the surface, there are some indications of this increasing dissatisfaction. First observed in 2015, 
The bleak remnants of once thriving woodlands surrounding Turn Lake serve as a sobering reminder of the forces at work. These dead trees, which are the result of poisonous gases leaking up from below, provide a somber image of what is underneath. The ground has been poisoned by carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, which are known to be precursors to volcanic activity. This poses a silent but lethal threat to wildlife, plants, and even people. Official reports have repeatedly characterized such phenomena as normal variations within Yellowstone's geothermal system, despite these concerning changes. However, the evidence keeps piling, rising emissions, expanding heat zones, and an increase in seismic tremors all point to a system that is becoming increasingly stressed. Senior geologists, such as Bob Smith, a well-known expert on Yellowstone, have cautioned about the risks this volcanic monster poses. His calculations suggest that even a minor eruption might be as large as or larger than the Mount St. Helens. Helens' disaster of 1980, which destroyed large forests and perished dozens of lives. A full-scale Yellowstone eruption, in contrast to Mount St. Helens, would have far-reaching effects, covering a large portion of the United States in volcanic ash and setting off a series of environmental and economic upheavals. There are still issues with official reports' transparency in spite of this increasing amount of information. Seismic data has been released selectively, prompting a few scientists to ask whether smaller tremors, which could be signs of magma movement, are being excluded from public databases. This incomplete knowledge has led to speculation that the dangers of Yellowstone's changing condition are being downplayed to avoid a panic. Thanks for watching and stay curious.